Good morning, it's Cheryl Alvarado, and I'm your moderator for this session. This is CloudBridge at the University of Kansas, Privileged Task Management. The question and answer session will be available at the end of the presentation. To submit a question, select the link to the question form in the YouTube chat box. This presentation is being recorded and will be available on the ESU Check 2020 website a few days before the conference ends. Now I'd like to introduce Jesse Kaufman and Andy Jackson from the University of Kansas. Hey guys, uh, I'm Jesse Kaufman and Andy and I are both uh, members of the Enterprise Systems team at the University of Kansas. The enterprise systems team is uh, divided between Linux and Microsoft systems, and we are on the Microsoft side. Um, as part of the that, we are responsible for the administration of the entire Microsoft ecosystem at the University of Kansas, meaning Windows Server provisioning, um, Active Directory, uh, Exchange, Skype for Business, Azure, and we're responsible for administering uh, at least some of the Microsoft 365 products online. Um, to tell you a little bit about the support structure at the university and the problem that we're trying to use CloudBridge to solve, um, the university is um, has a roughly centralized model, meaning about 70% of support rolls up through central IT. We're also a very um, heavy Microsoft shop. We're, we've you know, we use Skype for business as our enterprise phone system, Exchange, obviously for email. Um, and we have, uh, like I said, a delegated support structure, meaning there are tier ones out in the department which uh, try to help uh, the, which are responsible for helping the uh, frontline staff. Those tier ones are then assisted by tier twos who, uh, you know, help with more technical tasks, and uh, those, that rolls up to tier threes who are responsible for our enterprise desktop applications. And then uh, our team, ITES, is the ultimate domain admins on the, excuse me, Microsoft side. Um, CloudBridge is a very heavily Microsoft focused um, product, meaning it, uh, it runs PowerShell. So we can use it to uh, talk to, um, any of the Microsoft uh, products. It also can talk to other uh, systems across the enterprise. So what we were looking, so when we, when I started this job about five years ago, um, I would get requests from other units on campus um, that would uh, ask me to do a task that they didn't have permissions to do. Um, so what I'm looking for in CloudBridge is to empower the frontline tier one techs to uh, have the tools and access to solve those customer contacts on the first, uh, the first contact. So CloudBridge is a, a platform that allows us to, uh, to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the presentation. So what is CloudBridge? CloudBridge uh, is a platform, basically. It's at its core, it's a platform for running PowerShell scripts. Um, the, the key features are that it integrates with our SSO for authentication, meaning that if you have an account at the university, we can give you access to CloudBridge. It, like I said, it can communicate with uh, endpoints, both cloud and on-premise. So meaning right now we're in the middle of an exchange migration, so we can use CloudBridge to talk to Exchange on premise and Exchange online. It also is a credential manager and password vault. So we can delegate those credentials and passwords to uh, people who wouldn't have those permissions uh, generally. So we can give tier ones access to look at something in the Exchange server without making them an Exchange admin. 
Uh, it has script versioning, meaning that if we make a change to a script and it breaks something or uh, the results no longer work, we can roll back. It also is a job scheduler. We can run scheduled jobs to pull information into CloudBridge, uh, nightly, hourly, whatever. It also has audit logging and history, which means we can uh, you know, have a record of what people have done um, for security purposes, whatever. Um, CloudBridge comes with some pre-built solutions that are written by uh, the company, and uh, we've written a lot of our own solutions to, to the tasks that we need. Um, it also has granular role-based access. So that means that we can delegate one task to help desks, uh, the help desk role, meaning our students and uh, our help desk, our student workers at our help desk can um, say, check an email rule in an inbox for a customer. And then we can say uh, the tier twos can create a solution, meaning they can actually run a PowerShell script against the system. So it also has an interface that uh, allows us to easily group and export data and um, present data in a way that um, can be manipulated and there's the ability to run actions on results, which we'll get into later. So CloudBridge, like I said, can communicate to endpoints in the cloud and on-premises. Uh, talk about all that. A user, like I said, they can be uh, just a developer or they can be just a, uh, an, a user of the platform, meaning they can't actually create any solutions or we can give them the ability to create their own solutions, to share it out to other units and to, um, you know, uh, build uh, a tool themselves. Right now we are building a lot of tools at the, in the ITES environment. We'll, our support staff have also built tools to share with each other and empower their tier ones and the help desk to do tasks that they don't have access to do. So right now, CloudBridge is talking to Active Directory, Azure, Exchange, Skype, uh, the, our file storage, SharePoint, OneDrive, Identity, ServiceNow, and Teams. Um, we have created a view into some of these, this data that really um, gives a holistic picture of a user's identity at KU that is not sometimes available in other products or easily created, I guess. Uh, the goal for CloudBridge at KUIT, um, like I said, IT services, um, they're complicated things and each team has a different role to play. Well, we're, the solution we're trying to solve is um, how to get that customer, those needs addressed without waiting on another team to, um, to, to do that task. If it's, if it's a task that is written down in are in document, documented and um, all I need to do is have the access. Well, there's, it's just a roadblock to have a, a, a different person do the task. It would, it would improve services and uh, response time if we can just give the access to the tier ones, to the help desk, to the web staff, to whoever needs to do that task. Privileged task management, that is uh, the term that the company is touting for uh, what their software does. So privilege access man management is an industry standard uh, that basically um, allows a user to be escalated in privileges. So say um, I need to escalate to an administrator role to perform a task. Well, privileged task management goes beyond that and saying, okay, we're gonna escalate you to an administrator and this is exactly the task you can do and these are the parameters you can put in and they need to be validated in this way so that the task will succeed or so that there's no unforeseen consequences. So we are comparing it to basically an admission pass to the park versus a guided tour. It's, you know, you have to stay in these railings and you know, 
this ride is too, you know, must be this tall to ride this ride. The automation therefore increases time to resolution, it increases the reliability, increases visibility into the processes on the back end. So, you know, there's no, if a, if a tier one wants to know, does this person have a phone number? Are they provisioned for voicemail? What uh, Office 365 license groups they're in? That information is all available to them. Um, so these are some examples of the ways we use CloudBridge to um, increase uh, response time. Uh, a situation is that a user reports to be being unable to log into Adobe Creative Cloud. Well, this is some problem with their identity somewhere. So the user is going to submit a request. The technician uh, requests a time to meet with the user and figure out what's going on. And they gather details, and they may need to escalate it to tier two. And the tier two is going to look at it and say, oh, I know it's this thing, or and escalate it to tier three. And then eventually it ends up in, IT, in ITES. ITES gets the ticket. They see, oh, this their primary, yeah, primary, primary email alias is out of sync. And we fix that issue. Um, it could take, you know, hours. It could take days if people are out of the office or working on other tasks. With CloudBridge, uh, the user can right-click on uh, that entry for, or sorry, the tech can right-click on the entry for the user experiencing the issue. There's a script that runs. Oh, it checks to see are these properties aligned, and if not, it fixes it. So the result, the issue is resolved as soon as the um, technician is notified. Another example is adding a Skype delegate. Uh, previously, this was something that could only be done when uh, the user was logged in. So for even a VIP, even the provost, somebody would have to schedule a time to meet with the provost while he was logged into his workstation and set up a delegate. Uh, with CloudBridge, we can give uh, access on the back end for the users to just right click on the account and set that delegate. Um, restarting a service on a server. Again, a ticket to the, to the CSC, to our NOC, and uh, could take hours, minutes, days. If, uh, you, if you have access to CloudBridge, you right click on the service and restart it. Um, an issue with emails. Um, so if a user reports, oh, hey, I'm not getting some emails in my mailbox. Well, it's a ticket to the help desk. The student worker meets with them. They don't, can't figure it out. So then they up, uh, forward it up to ITES. Uh, in CloudBridge, a technician can just investigate the user's mailbox themselves and resolve the issue at that time. So with that, I'll turn it over to Andy. Andy has really developed a lot of the, the actual solutions in the product. So he's gonna give us a demo of how it works. Yeah, so I was gonna give a quick demo. Let me share my screen. All right, so this is our, our main landing page for uh, CloudBridge. Uh, we've, we've just called it our all users table. Um, and on here, this is kind of an example of how you can um, go in here and say, for any of these columns, you can search for anything. No, wrong keyboard. There we go. Um, and you can see it just displays whatever data you've, you've brought back. And for in here, you can, um, let me show you, you can group this data. So if I wanted to say, show me uh, the breakdown for all of these users by department. I can just take any of these column headers and just drag it up into the row right above it. And then this groups everything by those departments. Um, you can even group by multiple things. So if I wanted to say, uh, show me uh, the everyone grouped by their affiliation and then show me under that grouped by department. So I can see here, um, let's look for an example. We've got some emeritus staff, and if you expand that, uh, you can see the the department breakdown inside of there. Um, and then you can easily undo those groupings. Um, if you need to export the data, you can just hit export and do it as Excel or CSV. 
Um, you can search any of these columns. Uh, these have advanced searching uh, syntax if you want to do it that way. Um, like Jesse said, there are right-click actions that we've made available. So if I wanted to look up myself, I could go in here and say actions. And then these are all predefined actions that we've um, built and made available. So like we talked about with uh, Skype, if you wanted to set uh, an, an email delegate, you could go in here and say uh, delegate, uh, add delegate. And I could say, uh, go like that. And then you would just click add delegate. <clears throat> A little box will pop up and it'll say that it's running the account. I probably just have to hit refresh and see, look at that. But then it'll show you the status and you can click on the status at the end and it'll show you a little, um, uh, here it is. Here's the, the ad delegate. It was ran by me against one target. Um, this one failed. I, I, I can look into that later. Of course, it always fails during a demo. <laughs> um, another thing uh, that I can show you real quick is how you would get to this point. So this is the back end view of CloudBridge. Um, so we could go in here and I can just create a test script to show you. So if I click here and say new script, just say test. And like Jesse said, this is all just PowerShell. So as soon as you click on the script, it looks pretty normal for a PowerShell script. So one thing is if you use parameters, this is just telling me that I can get an IntelliSense extension. If you use parameters, ID, then when you hit run on the script, it'll dynamically detect what parameters you have set and present a box to the running uh, user and will present it in a format that makes sense for the type of parameter it is. So for this script, let's just say get ad user and then we'll feed it the ID. Um, you can go down here and say, I want this script to run with this set of credentials and these are all stored in Azure in their Azure credential safe. Um, so if I click on our local admin, on the back end, it knows that this credential needs to run in our data center as opposed to Azure. Um, so I can go ahead and switch this over to AD because that's what we'll be doing. So if I um, let's see, move that, to, I, say what? Put it, do you need to put in a result or is it just going to work like that? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, uh, no, it'll do it that way. Oh. If I put it into a parameter or a variable like this, then that wouldn't actually write it out. Uh, you would actually need to call it out again. Um, and whenever you write output to the screen, it's gonna create a new tab, which I'll show you here in a second. Um, so if I hit run, because I have a parameter on this script and it's a string, it knows that it needs that input. So I can say, yeah, just give me that one and run. Whenever you click run on the developer view, it's gonna show you the actual uh, runtime log from CloudBridge. If you write debug in PowerShell, you can have uh, data show up here. So we say we show that it uh, it completed. It only took seven seconds. So then we can go to results and see there is the raw PowerShell output from me getting that command. Um, so this is a little bit dirty still. So we would want to clean it up just a little bit. So you could go up here to the column chooser and say that I you know, I don't want the SID. Let's have the name up top. Um, we probably don't need some of these properties. Um, and then for this example, we'll just say that's good. And you can see that it has trimmed down those. Right now it says raw data. So we could say, let's rename this view and just call it user details and hit save. So now we have a script that when ran, it'll grab the user details from AD and present it in this format. So if we wanted to share this out to a group in our, in our organization, we could say delegate access, go up here, choose one of our pre-built roles in here of the different groups. So we could just choose ITWT and say add. The powerful thing is that you would give them a level of access. So most likely they'll need the action user to run actions but when you share an action on a script, you can say they must be at least this level to be able to see this action. So if you have protected actions that you only want your administrators to see, then you can say they have to be an owner or a developer. Um, otherwise you can share at the action user level so they can run that action. So we could change the name of this to get user details. And then if I hit okay, <clears throat> 
that's going to share it out. Actually, let me share it with myself just so I can show you. Administrator. So once I do that, I'm going to refresh the screen so it'll show up on my list. But now when I look at my uh, available solutions in CloudBridge, now I have get user details, uh, which is what I just shared with myself. So if I clicked on that, it's going to take me just to that instance of that script. Um, and that will allow you to run just that, that solution. Uh, taking a look a little bit farther into the back end, let me get back to that script real quick. You can further um, help things along by providing extra information with the parameters and the prompts. So, oh, and then also, like Jesse said, you can, you can run this schedule or this script on a schedule if this was something that would just be gathering data as opposed to needing input. Um, you could go to these parameters and you can say, change the dialogue prompt, change the prompt of the actual value, change the, the text that the run button says. Um, and then on permissions, you can also go in here and say, um, you know, if I've shared this with someone, they can only see their own execution data. This also allows us to open up the scripts data to be queried from other scripts within CloudBridge and also create dynamic uh, REST endpoints to be to read or execute the script from outside of CloudBridge as well. Um, if I wanted to add an action, I could say, all right, let's add an action and a script. And we could say, I have another script called get user details. And we wouldn't put it under a category. And then you could say, let's let's go ahead and map this uh, ID here to their name and say read only. Um, once we did something like that, I'll take you back here because that wouldn't really work on that script. Um, then it would show up as a right-click action in this menu and you could run yeah. uh, whatever solution there. Um, we've also been using it heavily for our email migration. So let me show you a couple of things we built there. Um, from the admin side, we have the migration batch control. This is just showing all of our migration batches that are currently um, in the system and what status they are total mailbox count and the, all the dates uh, associated with those. And then we have various actions available, like set complete after and send the emails to the user, check the licenses for every user in that batch, send an email to the text that support those users, um, just get the list of users or delete the batch. So we have some admin controls on the, on the back end. There's also migration statistics, which shows all of the batches um, as well, but then you can actually go into the accounts and see the size and what their specific uh, status is and how long they've been going and, and all of the details around the migration of that, uh, of that job. And then one thing that we, that I, is not easy to real show, but um, when we on the migration batch control run say the complete after and send pre-emails. We've also got CloudBridge hooked up with ServiceNow to create a change that, that's happening. And then as it's going through its process to update the change, and then once it's done, it just closes the change uh, with the appropriate uh, close code. So it's, it's got change control and documentation built into some of these scripts. Um, and then with that, I'd like to pass it back over to Jesse to kind of show how he took that data and made it into Power BI using CloudBridge. Yeah, so let's see. We were able, like I said, CloudBridge has allowed us to bring data together from a bunch of different sources and present it in a way that uh, that's unique. So, um, yeah. So uh, CloudBridge, as Andy pointed out, allows us to create a REST endpoint. Um, we uh, there's also a very uh, convenient feature in CloudBridge that will just create a Power BI query from your from that the solution. So this is the all user solution that Andy was demoing. Um, right now, I'm using this uh, the, this uh, configure script script query query uh, generator from CloudBridge to just create a uh, Power BI query that I'm going to plug into Power BI and create a dashboard that's going to show us how email migration is working at the university. So um, it's super easy. I just copied the, the query there and 
I'm going to go to Power BI. I'm going to create a new blank query. You're on the wrong monitor now. Yeah. Okay. So. So, you know, I'll just show you the end product. Um, so basically, it's really easy to bring that, that uh, data in there. And I had help from the very talented Susie Johannes at our University of Kansas to help me make a Power BI dashboard powered by CloudBridge to show the status of our email migration. Um, we're about halfway through. Oops. So you can see, um, you know, we've, we've got all this data pulled from on-premise, from Exchange, um, from our identity system, showing the affiliation of the people who have been moved to the cloud. Yes, who has... You're still sharing just the notepad. Oh, no. Okay. All right. So, yeah, here is the cool presentation that I was actually talking about. Uh, so we've got, uh, like I said, uh, data from across the systems, from identity, from Exchange Online, from Exchange. Uh, this is all uh, pulling from Office 365, where our email actually landed up or ended up in the data centers. You're still seeing no pay. Oh. Why is this so difficult for me? Okay. Now you guys can see it, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah. Once again, here's the here's the, the data pulled from multiple systems. Um, our identity system showing the affiliation of, of users in the cloud. And uh, yeah, the, the way the support rolls up to our TSC managers, um, where they actually ended up in the, uh, in the cloud, in the data centers, uh, and some views into our ultimate progress. Well, as you can see, we're we're getting there. We still have quite a ways to go. Um, and this is the jobs that Andy was showing you that he, that we create in the exchange console via CloudBridge, some uh, stats about them, if they failed, et cetera. So um, CloudBridge, uh, we've used it to, to delegate uh, permissions. We've used it to bring data together. Um, it's been a really useful tool for a, a lot of, um, different projects. Uh, so I think we probably should open it up to some questions. Hopefully some people, uh, hopefully what we have is interesting to you guys and uh, maybe we can answer some questions about how it works. Okay. Um, we have a few questions. What are some examples of functions your first tier help desk uses uh, with CloudBridge? And how much power do you allow them to have to troubleshoot? Um, so uh, 
Am I still sharing here? Let me share. So as Andy said, uh, or as Andy showed, the, the all KU users is really the, the landing page for the tier one. So we have a delegated structure in Active Directory, meaning that uh, where your computer lands up or ends up is underneath uh, a support model similar, a structure similar to your support model. So we have the TSC managers, um, we have the, uh, or the TSCs, which are, which are roll, rolled up aggregations of departments that are supported by a manager. And underneath that, a tier one may be responsible for some department, uh, say the law school. There would be an OU for law school and they would have permission to those computers. Uh, CloudBridge allows us to, to replicate that delegation in Active Directory for the users. Um, in, uh, in our AD environment, users are all populated by our identity system and they're all in a one OU that, uh, that staff don't have access to. So they have, uh, the, they have permissions on their users. So if I'm a tier one at the law school, really I can only do things on law school users. I can only, um, you know, set delegates. So I can't go to the provost and set a delegate. Um, we, I mean, we, there's a lot of uh, data that they can get about email, um, about the mailbox details, about um, their identity. Um, so we, we try to, you know, give the tier one all the tools that they might need to solve a problem or the, you know, or to find out how to best escalate that issue. Yeah, we, uh, uh, question, you think? yeah, early on, we, uh, we tried to engage most of our frontline staff, uh, to see what really would be helpful. We brought the customer service center in and a few of the tier ones and tier twos in. Um, and that's where kind of what, laid the the direction for where we were going to be building things um in terms of giving uh who gets access and everything it, it our approach was we want to keep it the same uh that we already have access set up so like jesse said it's the tier ones can only do things to the users that they directly support tier two supports several groups of tier ones so they can they can do things uh, across all those groups and then our tier three and our admins and our customer service center they're responsible for supporting everyone, so they have access to everyone. But that same per permission structure exists in other systems already, so we just replicated that uh, for this. Okay. Um, I think the next question you've already kind of answered. It was, uh, do you have a set group of scripts created for first tier to use, so you have a powerful but limited uh, access for first tier. I think you've already kind of answered that. I'll go on to the next question. How long does it take to develop the scripts to use? Are they made along the lines of your support FAQs or something else? The um, nice thing is that they're just PowerShell scripts. Um, and we're lucky that we have a lot of staff that are a lot of IT staff that are familiar with PowerShell, and we have a lot of PowerShell scripts already out there being used by these various groups. Um, and the nice thing about CloudBridge is that you can just copy the raw PowerShell in and just make a few minor tweaks uh, to make it work with the platform, and then it just works. Um, so it really just depends on you know how fast you're normally developing PowerShell scripts, because the, the taking a finished script and getting it into CloudBridge is, is pretty trivial. Um, and it just it just works. Um, so it really depends. But I'd say, uh, you know, over the past year that I've been working on this, we've probably developed probably 50 or 60 scripts uh, for the different units. Um, and obviously, we've been working on other things too. Um, but if it's a if it's a straightforward thing, and someone comes up with a request, we can usually get it done in in a day or two. Um, if we need to access a whole bunch of systems, it might take a little bit longer, but it really just depends on uh, what's being done and I guess the comfortability level with the person writing the script. All right, thank you, Jesse and Andy. Um, those, that was all the questions that I had. Um, thank you for everyone who's attended this session. Um, I want to pass along that we've learned that some people are having difficulty getting the watch now button to work from the schedule page. If you or your coworkers have that difficulty, 
um, please refresh that schedule page and try again. Um, I hope everybody has a great conference and thank you all for participating. <laughs>